If you're looking for a fast way to model without having to worry about topology and things like that, check out Magic of Voxel. It's a free program that lets you build with voxels, which are basically like 3D pixels. It feels kind of like Minecraft or Lego bricks. And yes, this is better for stylized models, but if you want to be impressed, take a look at all the voxel art people are making on Instagram. There's some really impressive stuff. So in this one, I'll be showing how to bring your Magic of Voxel characters into Blender so you can rig and animate them. Also, check out my Patreon for all the project files from my videos, coupon codes for free Gumroad products, and a bunch of other files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate some of the profits to environmental causes each month. Link is in the description. Here's a summary of what we'll cover. First, I'll show how I like to prepare and export my models from Magic of Voxel. We'll take a look at the different file types in Blender, how to get materials working, and then we'll clean up the model to get ready for rigging. Next, we'll make the armature and parent everything up so we can make our character deform. I'll also talk about a few ways to fix your white painting. All right, let's get started. So if you want to download Magic of Voxel, I'll put a link in the description. It is 100% free. You can just go to this website right here. Right on the front page, there's a download button that will send you to the GitHub. All you have to do is click one of these and it'll start downloading. I downloaded this one right here for Windows and it'll come in a zipped file. And when you unzip it, um, this is what it'll look like inside. All you have to do to open it up is click this exe file and that will open up the program for you right here. So I'm not providing an in-depth explanation for how Magic of Voxel works. It's not too complicated to use. Um, there are hints down here, so all you have to do is hover over things, and it'll tell you what they do, and if there are any shortcuts, things like that. Um, it'll tell you what all of these tools do, you know, how to use them in a very basic way. If anyone's interested in a more in-depth tutorial, let me know in the comments below. So I created some characters over here. And this little fish person is the one that I'm going to be bringing into Blender and rigging today. Also to prepare my character model, I took the selection tool and separated all the body parts that I wanted to move individually. If you want your character's joints to bend, then you can skip this step. So you can see down in the bottom right corner, we have this export tab. You click on that, it'll give you a bunch of different options for how to export. I prefer to save things as a PLY. And I'll show you that a little later. Basically, the topology will be nice and clean. You can also export as a cube right here. And that will basically import each voxel as like an individual cube. And that's nice for if you want to, you know, make your character crumble into a million cubes or something like that. All right, so now that we have those exported, let's get into Blender. All right, so here we are in Blender. I'm using version 3.0 for this one, but I have tested this in like 2.93 and it works fine also in that. So first thing we can do is come up to file and import our models in. So go to import. I'm going to import the OBJ first, Wavefront OBJ, and we'll just compare it to the other ones. So you can import OBJ. We have it right here. So we'll import the other one. Import, we have Stanford PLY right here. So I'll import the one fishy PLY. This one does not have a texture applied to it automatically. Um, we can fix it, and I'll talk about that a little later. And we'll import another one, which is also a Stanford PLY right here, um, the one that I exported as cubes. You can see this one is a little different because it is actually a bunch of individual cubes. And if we go into x-ray mode, you can see it has all of the inner cubes also. You can also edit these pretty easily if you want them to not be separated like that. You can just tab into edit mode, select everything, and hit period to change your pivot point to individual origins. When you do that, you should be able to scale all of these individually. And if while you're scaling it, you hold control, you can see it'll snap to different increments and that'll make it a little easier for you to attach these if that's what you're trying to do. And if you hold shift at the same time, it'll do the same thing, but just move in smaller increments. But we're not going to mess around with this one uh, in this video, so I'm just going to delete that. So now let's look at this OBJ. So it's pretty nice that it already has the colors and all of that, but when we tab into edit mode, you can see that the topology is pretty horrendous. Um, and it's not just that it's a bunch of triangles in like a strange order, but there are a bunch of vertices that are on top of each other like that. So you can see right there, that was three different points that were just directly on top of each other. If you were going to rig this up, it would not really deform very well. There would be a lot of cleaning up to do, and it's really just not ideal. So now let's look at this PLY. When we tab into edit mode, it looks just like it did in Magic of Voxel, which is pretty nice. It's just a whole bunch of squares and it looks really good. This does have a similar problem as the OBJ. You can see if I start moving this vertex, there was another one underneath. This one, it looks like it has like three 
at least three points right on top of it. And it's like that pretty much everywhere. So we do have to clean this up, but it's actually really easy. So all you have to do to clean it up is select everything, hit M to merge, and choose by distance. And you can see down at the bottom how many vertices it removed, quite a bit. Um, and now we won't have that problem. Basically any vert that was on top of another vert, they'll just fuse together. So that's pretty convenient and that's pretty much all you have to do to clean it up. Also make sure that you merge things before you put all of the arms and legs back in place because if you move things first then they'll be connected and you know we will have separated everything kind of for nothing in Magic of Voxel. So next what we can do is go into shading and fix the colors. So select your character or your model, go into shading right here, um, and we'll add a new material. And basically what Magic Voxel does when you export as a PLY is it also exports the color data, but it exports it as vertex color data, which is something we can actually access in Blender, and it's really easy. So all you have to do is hit Shift A to add a new node, hit search, and I'm just gonna search for vertex color right here. And when I click this, you can see it has this option right here, call, uh, coal, just for color. That's like the default vertex color name, so you can just choose that, and you can just plug the color into the base color right here, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Um, if you want, obviously, you can change things in here. You can change the roughness to make it more shiny or rough, things like that, make it metallic. But, you know, I'll leave that up to you to decide if you want to do any of that. Now, if you were going to use this in a game, it would probably be a good idea to bake this into a UV map. That is something that's not too difficult, but it'll take a while to explain, so I think that's something for another video. If anybody is interested in seeing how to do that, then just leave a comment below, and I'll probably do it in a future video. All right, let's go back to layout right here. And if you want to see the color, you can just go into look dev mode right here, material preview, and you know, we can see the color. So before we start rigging, we want to make sure that our character is in the very center and it looks like ours is not, it's offset a little. So now we have to fix that, but it's pretty easy. You can just go into edit mode and I'll just select these two points right here. Actually, I'll select uh, these two points right here and I'll hit Shift S, cursor to selected, and it'll just put the cursor directly between those. Then we can tab back out, back into object mode, right click, set origin to 3D cursor, and we can reset the location by hitting Alt G, and it'll move our character to the center. So now you can see our head is in the very center right here. If the 3D cursor bothers you not being in the center, you can hit Shift S again and choose cursor to world origin and it'll just put it back in the middle. We'll go into edit mode and just move things back into place. When you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you're either in wireframe like this or that you have X-ray enabled so that when you select things, it selects everything all the way through. Also, when you're moving things, you can hold control and it'll move them in increments like that. So I'll just move that down to the body like that and I'll just start moving stuff back into place. And now we can start uh, setting up our skeleton. So I'll hit shift A to add an armature, a single bone right here. And we can go over to object data properties and under viewport display, you can set this to in front. That way our bones don't get obscured by our character when we you know, have them overlapping like that. Um, I'm also gonna turn on the names and the axes for now. So now we can start setting this up. I'll just go into edit mode and start dragging this up. So this is gonna be for the body. We're not gonna have a very complicated skeleton. I'll extrude this up to the top of the head. I'll duplicate this for the arm. And once again, this is gonna to snap to the grid right here. Um, if you hold shift and control, then it'll snap in smaller increments and you can actually go you know, to the center of the arm like that. And if you wanna see where things meet, you can see a little more easily if you uh, go into solid view and then uh, hit this X-ray button up here, or you can hit Alt-Z. You can see that there's a face right here, so that's where we want this bone to be. We'll extrude this again. I'm sure you noticed that this isn't actually centered, so we can just select these, look from the top, and then move that to the center of the arm. I'll just duplicate this and use that for the leg right here. I'll do that same trick, and it looks like it's right about here. And then I'll extrude this to the front of the foot like that. And we can just move these forward. 
So you want to make sure that these bones right here are parented to the body, and mine are, but if yours aren't, you can just uh, shift select these two, make sure you select the body last, and control P, choose keep offset, like that. I turn the axes on because I like to make sure that when I rotate things on the x-axis that they're moving the way that I want. You can test that out by going into pose mode, selecting a bone, hitting R, and then X twice. And if it moves in the direction that you want, then you're good to go. I would like this to move more like up and down, like a jumping jack. So back in edit mode, you can hit N or open up this side panel right here. Go to item. And when you have a bone selected, you can change the roll right here. So I'll just set this to zero. Go back into pose mode. And that's the way that I wanted it to rotate. And that looks pretty good too. Next, we can rename things, which is pretty easy. You can either go to the bone properties right here, you know, have a bone selected and change the name right here. You can do it in the outliner, which is a little more awkward. Or with a bone selected, you can just hit F2 and it'll bring up this bone renaming dialog. So I'll just rename that one body. You can do this in pose or in um, edit mode, doesn't really matter. So you don't really have to do this, but I think it's good practice. So I'm just gonna run through and rename things really quickly. Okay, now that everything is renamed, we can uh, select everything, right click, go to names and auto name left and right. So everything that's on the left side of our character um, will now have a dot L. Uh, everything in the middle should not have that, and if it does, then it's not actually in the very center, and you can just move it, move your bones to the center, and, you know, then it should be fine. All right, with everything selected, once again, we can right-click and symmetrize. Now, everything that had a dot L will be duplicated and flipped to the other side, and you can see now everything on the right side has a dot R. And yeah, I know this is the left side of my screen, but it's the right side of our character, so that's why it names things that way. So this naming convention is pretty important when it comes to being able to like flip and copy poses and things like that. So it's a good idea to have the dot R and the dot L like that. I explained this a little more in some of my other rigging and animating videos. Okay, now that we have our bones set up and rotating the way that we want, we can actually parent our character to our armature. So I'll show you one of the problems with the way that we did it. Basically now if you select your character and then shift select your armature and control P to parent. If you try to do this with automatic weights, it'll give you an error usually that says uh, like bone weight painting failed or something like that. And it's because when you have uh, intersecting geometry or overlapping vertices, things like that, uh, automatic weight painting, it tends to not work right. It doesn't really know where to parent things. That is one of the benefits of doing it the other way where you can um, keep your character se separated, rig everything up, then you can do the automatic weight painting, and then you can move everything back into place afterward. But for some reason, um, it worked for us this time. I'm not really sure why, but we can go into pose mode and see how this works. It looks like we are getting some deforming in a way that I don't really want. What I wanted is for each segment to move without influencing the other segments. But you might want your character to be bendy like this, so in that case, um, you don't really have to separate your character into different pieces. So. Instead of parenting it the way that we did, what I'll do is select our character, shift select the armature, and control P, and choose uh, with empty groups. So now if we go into pose mode, nothing will happen because the, the vertex groups are empty that would be, you know, telling which part of the geometry to follow our bones. So now we have to do that manually, but it's actually not too hard. Basically what you can do is select everything in pose mode like that. Then you can go back into object mode, select your character, and go into weight paint mode. Now under weights, you can do assign automatic from bones, and this is kind of the same thing as uh, automatic weight painting. So we can do it that way now, and it'll give us like um, an automatic weight paint, kind of the same way it did before. Or another way that you can do it is just by um, tapping into edit mode on your character so you can see the mesh. And if you know the names of your bones, all you have to do is basically, I'm uh, under object data properties and vertex groups, so all you have to do is select the vertex group so I know that my body bone is right here. So I can just hit L to select the whole body like that. And then you make sure the weight right here is all the way up to one and hit assign. So now if I go into pose mode, I know that moving this bone will move the body like that. So we can just do this for every body part. I know the head bone is right here, so make sure you select head, 
hit L right here because it's a separated piece, and then you can just assign that. Just run through and do that for all of your body parts. So now you can see that when I move this around, each segment is actually completely separated, which is what I wanted in this case. So if you want to have a bendy character like this, but you're still not liking how parts are deforming like that, I would say the easiest way to weight paint it and fix it is by going into pose mode right here. Then you want to go up to edit and turn off lock object modes like that. Now you should be able to click on your mesh right here and go into weight paint mode like that. And when you do things in this order, you'll be able to hold control and left click bones, and it'll actually let you select the bones this way and view the weights. Um, and when you have them selected, you will also be able to rotate them still and move them around like that, which is pretty handy. I recommend if you're going to weight paint like this, that you go up to the active tool and workplace settings right here and make sure under options you have auto normalize turned on. This just makes sure that you don't have any conflicting vertex groups and it just makes weight painting a little quicker and easier. It's also easier if you go up here to overlays and turn on wireframe. That way when you're, you know, painting on weights, you can actually see exactly where you're painting. And for symmetrical characters, turning mirroring on is also a pretty good idea. Just make sure that when you're done, you turn lock object modes back on. All right, that's it for this one. If you want more videos about rigging and character animation, check out the playlist that I made on those topics. Let me know if you're interested in more videos about Magic of Voxel or other free modeling programs. And once again, you can get the project file for this video on Patreon. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.